Hi, and welcome to a new unit. Unit 3 is the individual in the economy. This is part 1. In today's lesson, we will be learning about fiat money versus commodity money. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. Chances are, if you went to pay for things with money you printed at home, you would probably be arrested. But why should this happen? What makes my pieces of paper different than government money? Itinerant economist dollars must be just as good, surely. Let's look at fiat versus commodity money. Let's take a look at a United States $1 bill. What is it that gives this thing value? You can give it to people and get back, food that you can eat, or things that you can use, and things of hard value. But what is it about this little piece of paper that makes it valuable? Or I guess it's not paper, as it's 75% cotton, 25% linen blend, or something like that. But the question stands, what makes this flimsy little thing, that doesn't seem to have any use in its own right, valuable? If we step back in time a little bit, and take a look at what the old United States dollars looked like. If we look at the top of the note, it says silver certificate. So what does that mean? If we keep reading, it says that this certifies, that there has been deposited in the Treasury, of the United States of America, one silver dollar payable to the bearer on demand. What does that mean? What this dollar originally represented was, the fact that you could turn in this bill for a silver dollar. This piece of paper in theory, could be turned into the United States Treasury, which guaranteed that it had in its deposits, a silver dollar, an actual piece of silver, it would return to you for this bill. In a sense this gave it value, because it was a guarantee that you could turn it into silver if you wanted. In this way you could trade this with other people as if it were a piece of silver, because if you gave it to someone, that person, now being the bearer on demand, could then in theory, turn this in and get a silver dollar as a result. The reason for even having this paper money, and printing these bills is that it was pretty inconvenient, to always lug around actual pieces of silver. This would be especially true in the case of even higher amounts. So for example, here we have a $100,000 bill. The same kind of guarantees are written on this bill, but it is instead in gold instead of silver. It says that $100,000 in gold are payable to the bearer on demand, as authorized by law. This is statement legally backing up the idea that this could be turned in for $100,000 worth of gold. That way people could actually treat this as if it was, $100,000 worth of gold, without having to carry around that quantity of gold. What is it that you actually got when you turned in your paper for one silver dollar? What is it that was payable on demand? Well you have, what's another form of money, what you can use in commerce and kind of trade with people as a medium of exchange. Officially United States money, but the difference is that the piece of money itself, is the valuable metal. It actually is the silver, so in theory if you didn't trust the United States government anymore, you could melt it down for just the pure silver and maybe other countries still value that silver. And similarly there was gold coins like this that people would use. Like this right here is a gold coin worth $3. So, this is something where the value is held within it because presumably people value gold, and even if this didn't have a fancy you know, United States symbol all stamped onto it, it would be something valuable, because it's gold. And this kind of money, this gold coin or these silver coin has a special kind of name. It's called commodity money. Basically what this means is that the thing that you're using for money, the thing that you're trading with, has some value in its own right. Even if it wasn't money, it would still be valuable. A commodity means something this is valuable, it could be silver or gold, or things like food or furniture or livestock. These are commodities. You could argue that silver and gold aren't valuable other than the fact that people just like using them for trading. They are pretty and useful for jewelry. There are some electronics that use them, but on the whole, the main reason that people value silver and gold is because they're used for trading. It is weird that these are used as examples of commodity money, when in fact other uh, commodities like rice or oranges feel much more real, they are something you can use in its own right, rather than pieces of metal. With the forms of money here, where you have something that you could in theory exchange to a bank, and then the bank would return to you the actual commodity that it represents, in this case gold or silver. These are called commodity-backed money. 
because their value is being backed up by the value of whatever commodity they represent. In this case, silver or gold. But in the early days of money, you had money like the shekel, which represented a certain weight of barley. The commodity doesn't just have to be silver or gold, sometimes you have money that represents a different sort of commodity. This is the kind of old style money that was used in many countries. Many countries had commodity backed money. But in modern terms, it's common not to have these. You can just have a bill that's not backed up by silver or gold. You could not turn this in and get silver as a result. And this is termed fiat money. This word fiat is like a decree or a declaration. It is like the United States government has declared that this is money. And just by declaring that it's money, that will gives it value. So it feels much hollower in comparison to commodity money or commodity backed money. But there's a couple of hard things backing this up. It says this note is legal tender for all debts public and private. That actually gives it a little bit of clout. It is valuable as long as you trust that the government will enforce its laws as it claims that it will. But for the most part, what gives this note value is the fact that other people trust it. The reason that you value having a dollar bill is because you know you can give it to most people and they are willing to trade you valuable things for it. And at the end of the day, that's what was making silver dollars or those $100,000 gold notes valuable. Because almost no one would actually trade it in for the silver or gold because why would you? It's just as good. In fact, it is a little bit more convenient to just carry around the bill itself. Once that's in the psychology of a society, and once everyone is used to the idea of trading around this paper representative money in order to get things of value, it's not actually a huge leap to just have the paper that you're trading around as long as everyone still trusts it. And it still serves the main functions of money. It's a medium of exchange and you can store this for value. The paper's not going to degrade and it does give a unit of value and this assigns a number to various goods out there. But it is something that was declared. It's not an actual hard good, and this is an important distinction to recognize. Fiat money really does mean it's just trusted. It's just taken on faith that people will find this valuable. But for that matter, that's also true of silver and gold. It's just taken on faith that if you melted down the silver, other people would find that valuable. And the same goes for gold. There were other cultures that you might find that don't value gold in the same way. They might not see why you would want this fancy metal. The idea of having money that we use because we trust that others will find it valuable isn't actually that absurd, and as long as it serves the same basic functions of money, you can have a working society. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.